the question brings the answer and the problem brings the solution how it all fits together make peace feel appreciation for all of this contrast so when new contrast shows itself to you because you want expansion then thank the contrast that's shown itself to you because as it shows you what you don't want it shows you what you do want you cannot be the eternal being that you are without all of that It's interesting the last thing that you said and I'd like to get into that I started following your material I guess about 10 years ago and I spoke with you frequently and for a while I was a testimonial you know my health my business my net worth everything just went like this and then a few years ago one by one they just started kind of flattening out and then going down a little it's not bad but it's not like what it was before, sort of effortless and just flowing. What were the thoughts that I was thinking that made that happen? <laughs> we will help you sort that out. But before we do, we want to remind you that it is always an asking that is the beginning of new desires. And so when you first came into awareness of this conversation about creating your own reality in the way that we are presenting it here you were like most people in that you had many desires that were not feeling to you like they were controllable it's like when you pull the slingshot back 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 the further back you pull it when you let go of it the further your rock goes and so with most of you you had a lot of things bubbling in your vortex that had been bubbling there for a long time that you were not aware of. That's what we were just saying today. You were not aware of them. And once you began applying some of the softening of resistance techniques that we were offering, you became the realizer of more and more and more of them and the allower of more and more and more of them. But it is so helpful that life causes you to keep putting more and more and more things, material, basis for creation back into the vortex. And so recently we've been talking, we'll just give a little recap for the benefit of people that may not have heard it. And then we're going to tell you something new that we know you've also heard, but it's important to this conversation. So step one is life causes you to ask. And when you ask, it is given every time. So you ask and it's given, but it's given in this vibrational vortex version that we were talking about, where even though it's been given, you don't know that it's been given. You don't know that it's in there. You don't know that it's been given because you can't yet see it, hear it, taste it and touch it and smell it and so forth. And that's where you were when we first met, not completely, but a lot of things were at that state. Step one and two then ask. Step two is it's given. It becomes a vibrational reality. Step three is you have to find some way to be a vibrational match to what's in there. So when you do that, then those things begin manifesting into your experience. Lately, we've been talking about step four. Step four is you become a master of what we were talking about here today. Staying in the receptive mode, not letting the condition control the way you feel. Not letting the condition control the way you feel. It's so easy to observe and then to conjure a vibration based upon what you're observing. And that's not mastery because you've done step one and step two. But unless you are able to hold yourself in a good feeling place. Esther had such an interesting week because she has a new house in Utah. It's a beautiful house up on a hill. It's a literal castle. She was so happy about the idea of buttons or castles buttons or castles and she thought I like castles way more than buttons <laughs> so this big old house it's an old house it's a beautiful house but when they went to service the air conditioners there are 10 heaters and air conditioner units up in these big attics some of them were so broken they needed to be turned off because they might kill you <laughs> so over a period of months, all of those air conditioning and heating units were replaced. And Esther is thinking, hmm, I should have known about that. But then she thought, if I knew all the things that were wrong with this house, I would not have bought it. And I'm so glad that I bought it because there isn't anything about it that can't be fixed. But there was a little bit of doubting herself. What's wrong with me? Shouldn't I find a house that's perfect? It looked perfect. It just wasn't. So then when the people were looking for the air conditioning situation, they noticed that there were some leaks in the attic. Now, these are big attics. You could live up there. You could all live up there. <laughs> 
And so when they get looking on this big, very peaked roof, the membrane between the outer tile and the wood roof is almost completely rotted away. So it needs a new roof, a great big new roof. <laughs> so they bring cranes in and they bring big trucks in and they break the driveway with the big cranes. And Esther began thinking and saying, one step forward, two steps backwards, <laughs> one step forward, because it just seemed like she was never going to get to the end of all of that. But then things started going and Esther started relaxing and she acknowledged that it's an old house. And then she remembered something that Jerry told her every single day. We're just molding it into place. It's the process. So then Esther thinks about all the nice people she's getting to meet and how much fun she's having making decisions and how much more beautiful the new roof is because she got to choose a roof that looked the way she wanted it to look. The color was better for her. And so now she's almost ready to invite some of you to come and play with her in some special seminars in this wonderful, beautiful place that she really thinks you'll really like it when you get there. And then she got a call yesterday that the new roof is leaking. <laughs> the new roof took months to put it up and cost <laughs> is leaking. How can that be? I teach the science of deliberate creation. How can this be happening to me? So Esther says, well, we just have to do whatever we need to do. And so they begin looking and they find that not only is it leaking, there are big chimneys. There are 17 fireplaces in the house and there are big chimneys. Uh, she shouldn't have bought it. She should, no, no, she didn't. <laughs> and the chimneys are stucco on the outside and apparently they're absorbing water and it's not the roof. It's sort of around the base of those. And so they're going to figure it out. And another really nice company is coming to help her with some really fantastic new thing that they're going to spray all over the house in order to stop it from leaking. And so Esther is thinking, well, it's just thoughts turning to things and everything's coming into place. And then she got a call from someone who is overlooking her place in Del Mar. And they said, during the storm the other night, a big tree blew over. Didn't cause any damage. It was right where her van that she just bought was sitting. And then Esther thought, hmm, I was going to leave that van right there. And then all of a sudden one morning I woke up and I thought, hmm, I think I'll drive that van out to Texas and show it to the kids. So she got up the next morning, she had a few days, she got in the van, she drove it to Texas, and the next day, a big tree fell right where the van was parked. And Esther thought, well, maybe I am more in the receiving mode than I'm giving myself credit for. Maybe I should start looking for the things, the thousands of things that are going well, and not put any emphasis on the things that are maybe not. And maybe I should accept that I am the creator of my own reality. And maybe I should accept that when things don't go the way I want them, that it causes a stronger desire to go into that vortex and it becomes the beginning of more that source and law of attraction are going to bubble into something. So there is more potential desire for me to receive. So that was our long way of saying to you that all of these things that are happening are causing you to put more into that vortex because you can't make magnificent things. We've never said this before. Thank you so much. Things can't come from nothing. They have to come from something. They come from vibrational basis. And that's why you were born into this universe, into this time-space reality with contrasting things to cause you to put more and more and more and more into the vortex so that law of attraction has more and more and more and more that can come together so that you can be the receiver of the new ideas because complacency has never been your style and things going along just perfectly has never been your style. You must be reaching for something more. That's where the juice is. The juice is out on the leading edge, not on the complacent edge. The juice is out on the exaggerated, contrasting edge, not out of the, oh, everything's perfect in my life edge. That's when there's no reason to mold anymore, you see. <laughs>